of talking of wars, the defining war of the 20th century was, of course, the Second World War, a globe-spanning conflict of horrendous losses. Cities around Europe and in Asia suffered enormous damage as a consequence of bombs. And here is a collage of pictures of the devastation rained in upon London during this war. Something like 30,000 flying bomb hits were recorded in the Greater London area at that time. Okay. A new collaboration between the University of Portsmouth and the National Archives has produced an interactive website where one can actually track individual bomb hits all over the Greater London area. This is called Bomb Site. And on the lower right, you can see the cluster of bombs, something like 30,000 bombs hitting around the London area. And you see a blown up segment uh, showing the River Thames, where you can see where individual bombs have hit. Yeah. Now, this is freely available on the internet. One can just type in the bomb site project and one can play with this data. And this gives unparalleled opportunities for a curious individual to try to find mathematical models to fit on these real data. Right, so here's something one can do. For instance, one could simply put in place, superimpose a grid, block by block, across a segment of London. Look at the number of bombs that have fallen on individual blocks and try to characterize these statistically. So here, for example, are some data collected by R.D. Clark in 1946 for a region of South London where he divided the region into 576 blocks and recorded 537 flying bomb hits. Well, by now we're very familiar with what we're doing. What is the average number of hits per block? Well, lambda is 537 divided by 576, or about 0.9 bombs per block. Right? So each block received about one bomb on average. A conjecture at that time was that the bombs were clustered, that certain regions saw a preponderance of bombs and others did not. In other words, they were more guided than not. We could investigate the validity of such a guess by looking at the data and asking, is there a good Poisson fit to the data? The absence of a good Poisson fit would suggest that perhaps there was some clustering. But as you can see from the data, the fit between the observed frequencies of bomb hits in the various blocks and the expected values from the Poisson model are indeed quite remarkably good. I encourage the reader to go take a look at the website and play with the numbers for herself. Of course, there is going to be an issue of model selection. What kind of region are we going to look at? If the region becomes too large, clearly the Poisson approximation isn't going to work. The bombs were all clustered around London. But if one looks at small enough regions in London and looks at how the hits were spread out in that region, one would find a much better approximation to pure randomness. In other words, bombs were targeted, they fell into a general area, but it is very hard to target individual elements or places in that area. Echoing a comment of T.W. Kerner, we can contrast in the early imprecise munitions of the 17th century and the early 20th century and the modern highly accurate munitions, cruise missiles, and the personal delivery mechanisms, very accurate, the suicide bombings. We can target in the contrast between these, both the technological progress and the moral progress that mankind has made in the last 200 years.